This season was meant to be a fresh start for Mercedes, one where it would eliminate the Achilles heel that held it back time and again in Formula 1's new ground effect era. After two years of struggling, Mercedes produced an overhaul 2024 car, one team principal Toto Wolff insisted was a good foundation to build from. But it still hasn't got on top of one of the key challenges of these ground effect cars, hitting problems that are all too familiar. This has to cast doubt over whether the dominant force of the 2010s will ever get on top of these types of cars. Despite optimism after pre-season testing, 2024 has not started well. So far, Mercedes has only the fifth fastest car on single lap pace, with a deficit to Red Bull fractionally smaller than it was in 2023. That in itself isn't the big concern, because Mercedes always knew it would be off the pace of Red Bull at the start of the year, but the key objective was to have a car that worked consistently and performed in line with what the team expected. In Bahrain, that seemed to be the case, despite cooling problems that compromised Lewis Hamilton and George Russell's race pace. But in Saudi Arabia, some very familiar complaints emerged. Before getting on track in Jeddah, Hamilton said, Last year we didn't have the confidence in the high speed, so it'll be interesting to see now with a car we're more confident with. He was then surprised, and likely bitterly disappointed, to discover during practice that, just like last year, he didn't have confidence in the rear end. The problem persisted throughout the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix weekend, with Hamilton even experimenting with a higher downforce rear wing in FP3 to try to solve the problem. Thanks to these struggles, while Mercedes had been a little closer to the pace in qualifying in Bahrain this year versus last year, it was substantially worse off in Saudi Arabia. The pace deficit in itself isn't the primary concern, instead it's the reason for the difficulties at the high-speed Jeddah circuit that are worrying, because they highlight a problem Mercedes didn't know it still had and hoped it had fixed. Jeddah is not only a fast track, but one with a smooth, high-grip track surface. To get the performance there out of these ground effect cars, you need to run the car low and stiff. And this is where Mercedes is, yet again, hitting trouble. So what exactly was going wrong? Well, you'll remember both Hamilton and Russell complaining about a lack of confidence in the rear end of the car consistently over the past two seasons, and now they have every reason to again. A glance at the performance of the cars through the high-speed sweeps of turns 6 to 10 at Jeddah highlights the difficulty. This is a challenging section of the track for the car, and the Mercedes W15 was the slowest of all in qualifying at the entry to turn 7, 7 km per hour slower than Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren, giving away 16 km per hour to Red Bull at the apex. After qualifying, Russell talked of the struggle of trying to find the sweet spot with the car. Russell felt he had been stronger on the first day of practice in Jeddah, but the Mercedes took a step backwards and he indicated the same thing happened in Bahrain. This had echoes of the past two years, talking of a car that works well if you can get it in the right window, which it very rarely was. I asked Russell after qualifying how concerned he was that there might not be such a sweet spot for the car. He argued it's about finding a better compromise. This has echoes of what Mercedes has battled for years. The inconsistent performance, the unpredictable swings from day to day, and even between the two sides of the garage, as well as the struggles with getting the car to do what is expected in the faster corners when running close to the ground. And worst of all, this is something the team believed it had got on top of. In Bahrain, Russell spoke of his certainty that this problem with the lack of confidence in the rear end had been solved, and that Mercedes had a much better platform to work from. As he said, there's nothing telling us that this will be a problem. It's clear the problem isn't as bad as it was before, it's only in specific corners where this lack of confidence, which comes from a lack of downforce, manifests itself. But it's clear that a problem Mercedes believed was behind it persists. As head of trackside engineering Andrew Shovlin explained, Mercedes was battling three main problems in Saudi Arabia. Firstly, the poor balance meant the car often suffered snaps of oversteer in the high-speed corners. He also confirmed that bouncing was a problem primarily in qualifying, but he indicated that the main difficulty was simply not having enough grip. And this is something Shovlin says the team is working hard on to understand before the Australian Grand Prix. It's a worrying situation that means an immediate upturn in form is far from guaranteed. So what exactly is going wrong? Well, it's clear that Mercedes is hitting trouble at high speed when the car is pulled close to the ground by the powerful Venturis in the underfloor. When it comes to ground effect cars, the closer to the ground you are, the more downforce you generate, but you don't want to hit the ground or you run the risk of triggering bouncing or porpoising. This is why the suspension of these cars is so important. Ideally, you need a mechanical platform that holds the car in the right place to generate that downforce without being too stiff to be compliant enough to drive. That's a sweet spot Red Bull is brilliant at achieving. However, simulating that in the design and development phase is not easy. You can't do it in the wind tunnel, as you can't have the car model hitting the belt. CFD is a valuable tool, but as the floor of the car gets close to the ground, the calculations become exponentially more complicated. 
Mercedes has been working on improving its simulation tools ever since it realised it was in trouble in 2022, so this is an area where gains have been made, but according to Wolf, it's not enough. What he characterised as a fundamental problem in Jeddah was one of the floor not producing the downforce the simulations indicate at high speed. So we're into the question of correlation here. There's a point where the downforce isn't produced at the levels required to give the car the grip it needs, which in particular manifests itself as a lack of confidence in the rear end. And that confidence is lacking because the overall grip is not there. I asked Wolf after the race in Saudi Arabia how concerning it was that this problem has echoes of the past two years. He admitted the team has spent two and a half years chasing something fundamental without solving it. The team must, according to Wolf, give it a massive go in the build-up to Australia to understand the problem. And while Albert Park is not as fast a track as Jeddah, the high-speed left-right of Turn 9 and 10 will be a time-sapping sequence if Mercedes is still having problems, and there are also other corners where the team expects to be in trouble if there's a repeat of Jeddah. The problem is, if the source of the weakness is the simulation tools the team has been using, tools that they've been working on sharpening for more than two years, can it really be expected to turn things around immediately? Wolf says he's 100% sure that Mercedes will fix this. The question is, can Mercedes really do it? You might assume that's it for another season for Mercedes with another change of car concept it needed to solve this problem. And this is where the good news is because that's not necessarily the case. Mercedes made some major changes to the architecture of the car for 2024 with a revised monocoque, including moving the cockpit rearwards by 10 centimeters and a revised rear suspension and gearbox. These were hard points in the design that needed to change to create more performance potential, and all are positive. Instead, the Mercedes problem presumably lurks in the detail of the floor, and that primarily means the hidden topography of the underfloor. As we saw when the floor of the Red Bull was exposed last year, the top of the floor is a complex shape, and this is key to avoiding the problems Mercedes is having. When you're at high speed and the car is close to the track, you don't want the downforce to keep building endlessly or you will suddenly be on the ground. Therefore, you want to design your floor so there's a small controllable stall effect that will prevent the car from being pushed lower. However, you don't want this stall to be too big or you risk the car rising and porpoising beginning. This is fiendishly difficult to do and is potentially what is eluding Mercedes. The fact Wolf talks about the car not producing the downforce anticipated in the high speed suggests that perhaps the attempts to control this, what our resident F1 technical director Gary Anderson calls a dimmer switch effect, is not working as expected. Maybe the stall is a little too big, or perhaps the suspension isn't controlling things enough in these extreme low conditions. Whatever the problem is, it requires enormous depth of understanding to eliminate, and from the outside we can only point to the possible problems in general terms. However, the fix will lurk in the detail. If it can't be solved with tweaks to the setup and the way the car runs, which seems unlikely, Mercedes will surely look to the shape of the underfloor and perhaps the detail of the floor edges to tackle this. If it is primarily an aerodynamic problem, then that is fixable if, that is, you can understand it. There have been other problems for Mercedes that have led to this tough start. In Bahrain, the puzzling cooling problems forced the drivers to lap several tenths off the pace of the car. Without that, the team believes it would have been up there with Ferrari. What's more, it had a car that appeared to be bouncing more than others. While watching trackside throughout testing in the first weekend, we observed this problem and it happened again in Saudi Arabia. That again points to things not working quite as hoped for Mercedes. These are all concerning troubles that will hinder the ambition Mercedes has to take a car that fundamentally works well and add performance. As Hamilton said, it's at least strong in the slower corners, but the fast corners need to be tackled. Once again, it's troubleshooting problems while the competition, notably Red Bull and Ferrari, are simply able to work through a normal development program. That's been the story of the past two years for Mercedes. If it's to have any chance of getting back to regular winning ways before 2025, it needs to get on top of the problems as quickly as it can. But recent history tells us that might not be possible.